Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wassacrew and I'm here to review all the latest films in theaters and streaming as well as anything that you guys recommend, whether it be recent films or old school movies. Before we start today's video, don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that way you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that are going to pop up on YouTube. Also, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Now, today's video is going to be a special uh, video um, as we are going to be ranking and going over the top 20 MCU movies in the MCU universe. Yes, I know there are 21, but I'm omitting The Incredible Hulk from the list since, A, no one ever really talks about it, B, um, they kind of like to pretend it doesn't exist, and C, it would probably have been numbered, it probably would have been last on the list anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and kick it off. Uh, so yeah, um... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to break this into two videos or not. It kind of depends on how long this video goes. I'm going to try to go through it quickly, but there will be certain films that I'm just going to linger on and talk about a little bit more than others. Uh, I'm going to try to go over a few points, some um, good things and bad things of the movies, so that way I kind of give it a, an equal weight to uh, all the films. Um, but obviously, most importantly, spoiler alert, because I will be talking about parts of the films and things that have happened. So if, if you have not seen... All the MCU movies, A, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> and B, um, either A, skip over the that particular film and move on to the next one on the list, uh, or um, or just, you know, watch it when at your leisure, whenever you get through them all. Uh, but yeah, we def definitely want to get all these put out and uh, on the um, channel before uh, Endgame came out, since that, even though it's not the last MCU movie, it does feel like the last, or kind of like the series finale of, of all the movies that have come before it, um, as we will be getting some characters who will be leaving and, and not returning, and so this definitely does feel like kind of like the bookend to the MCU films that we have had so far. So like I said, we're going through 1 through 20, we're going to start at 21st and go up from there. Uh, if the video does tend to get a little too long, I will probably stop and um, at number 11, and uh, then basically do a top 10 list. Um, so yeah, so if you see this video and the video stops at after 11, you're like, well, where's the rest? Go back to the YouTube page. There's probably another video that's going to have the top 10. Unless I can get through this pretty fast, but we all know how much I ramble. So chances are this is probably going to be a two-video uh, ranking list. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this underway. And like I said, spoiler alert for all these films as I will be covering crucial plot points in all the movies. So let's go ahead and get this underway. Uh, number 20, which is probably everyone's number 20. And um, uh, but actually, before I start, once again, this is my ranking. This is not a definitive ranking. This is not the end-all, be-all ranking. I get that people have their own favorites, have their own views. Um, some people love some of the big movies. Some people hate some of the big movies. There are movies that people don't normally like that some people love. I get that. There are going to be some movies on this list that a lot of people love profusely that are ranked low for me, and I will explain my reasons why they're low. There are some movies that people did not like that are higher on my list than others. So this list could piss off a lot of people. I get that. But this is my list. Um, this is my feelings towards it. Your guys' opinions are fantastic, and feel free to leave them on the comments below the video. I would love to see your guys' list, uh, if you guys ever make one. Um, but that's what this list is. This is my personal list, and I hope you guys respect that. Um, definitely leave the hate out of it if you guys do leave any comments. And, yeah, let's make it a lively discussion uh, about it instead of, a, you know, your, your list sucks. You know, just say, cool, um, this is my list, and blah, 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 blah. So try to be mindful of everyone who does talk on the comments section, as uh, these are all... More or less, all these movies are great films. I love, for the most part, 17 of these films. So having to place them in certain orders was very hard. And uh, there are some movies that are in this, this bottom bracket of 11 through 20 that I love. But they are in here. So just because one is ranked number 12, for instance, does not mean I don't like that movie. It just, I might love that movie. It just means that the movies that are ahead of it... I liked a little bit more because of certain instances in the films, and it's not a knock on that film itself, because we are talking about a fantastic set of movies here with the MCU, and um, you got to place them somewhere, and not all of them can be number one or in the top five. So bear in mind that 
that the ranking order of this list does not mean that one movie is lesser than the other. It is literally just how I feel towards a certain movie, and it doesn't make that movie bad or, or less than. It's just how I feel about it. Now that I got all that PC crap out of the way, let's go to number 20. So number 20 is probably going to be number 20 on a lot of people's list because it is probably one of the MCU movies that people like to forget happened uh, because it's just very bland and boring, and that is Thor 2, The Dark World. Um, the movie's just kind of ugh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just kind of an ugh film, and it's not uh, like it's bad. It's just, it's just there. Um, it's not, I mean, it's just, it's the one movie that every MCU fan, for the most part, just kind of goes, eh, to. Uh, I mean, the only good part of it, for the, for the most part, is, is Loki. I mean, Thor does get to be more Thor in this film, but it's still rather dry. And Loki brings kind of a jolt to the, to the film that makes it better and makes it more entertaining. Um, but the film itself is still just kind of lackluster. Uh, you have the the Warriors 3 once again are wasted into nothing characters, which um, I, like to, I like that they got used in the first Thor uh, a little bit, but they're, they're regulated to even smaller parts in Thor The Dark World. So uh, once again, you take three warriors who are, or four warriors, um, that are really great, and you're just not utilizing them at all in the battle that Thor is doing. Um, so once again, they get wasted. Uh, also, um, one of the worst, uh, villains in MCU history with, uh, uh, Malachi? I want to make sure I say his name right. Um, Malekith. Malekith. I knew I didn't say it right. It's nothing that really against him. I think he could have been a great villain, but they just don't give him enough to really sink his teeth into like they gave Loki. Uh, and so it's, it's, he's, he's labeled as one of the weakest villains, if not one of the worst villains in the MCU films so far. And of course the whole battle at the end where it's just, you know, jumping in and out of portals is literally used more for comic effect than it is for actual, um, stakes in the final battle. I mean, yes, they, it does get used in the potential final blow. Um, but for the most part, it was more just comic relief for, um, for Darcy and, and the the assistant she has than it is for actual any utilization to the actual film itself. So yes, at number 20, it is Thor The Dark World. And uh, that's that's pretty that's a pretty firm. Um, I, I, I would say, for instance, the 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 first 20, 19 and 18 are pretty firm for me. Uh, there's <laughs> there's for me there's no real argument of moving those up any further on the ladder. They are probably my least uh, my three least favorite um, MCU movies. Um, and I remember going back because I did go back and rewatch uh, all the films leading up to Endgame. And this is the only one where I was just like, <sighs> just let's just let's get through this kind of film. So Thor: The Dark World at number twenty. Going to number nineteen is Iron Man two. Look, I I love the first Iron Man. Um, Rob, Robert Downey Jr., fantastic uh, as Tony Stark. I love his quips. I like uh, pretty much everything about Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Here's the problem. The sequel is not good. Uh, first off, once again, awful villains. Uh, Justin Hammer is has the ability to be a great villain, but he's just more regulated as a comedic buffoon throughout the entire film, and never once is considered a, a, uh, an actual foe of Tony Stark. Now, could they have brought Justin Hammer back in the franchise to make him more stronger? Absolutely, but with the potential of Robert Downey Jr. not returning after Endgame, that seems pretty much a, a no of that happening. So we basically are only regulated to knowing Justin Hammer as this moron um, rival of Tony's, who Tony doesn't even consider a rival. He considers him, like, an annoying little pest. And then you have Whiplash. While he looks cool, and I love Mickey Rourke, um, in it, his character is also completely wasted. It's, it's a character that could have been a hell of a lot bigger of, of a foe and, and a character in the movie itself. But once again, he's regulated to basically doing scenes with Justin Hammer and most of those scenes are flat. Uh, it almost se seemed like they were improv because Justin Hammer or Sam Rockwell is just doing everything he can and Mickey Rourke's just kind of, I want my bud. And that's it. And it's just like, 
those scenes are are all just really bad scenes. Um, I also uh, didn't like um, how Tony was just being straight up destructive in the entire film. Like, look, I get that in the comics, Tony Stark is an alcoholic, but Disney did not, or Disney slash Marvel did not want to make Tony an alcoholic in the films. So let's just have him be utterly destructive in every um, every respect, including getting getting uh, drunk as hell during his birthday party. Like, is that supposed to be the equivalent of him being an alcoholic? I just didn't like what they did with Tony's character in this movie. Um, it just didn't work overall, and I think it just kind of came more of a hindrance. So you have two bad villains, and then you have Tony just being a, a moron through most of the movie. Um... That really uh, hurt the film overall. Like Robert Downey Jr. is still super charismatic and still fun to watch, but it was just one of those things where you're watching him and you're just like, man, he like I really don't like what they're doing with the character in this film. Uh, two good things of the movie, you know, so it doesn't seem like I'm just bashing it the whole time. I love the addition of Don Cheadle as a uh, as a uh, road Rhodey. Um, I'm not a fan, I was not a fan of Terrence Howard's, uh, uh, Rhodey, um, in the, uh, in the first film, and, um, of course, huge first edition would be, uh, Scarlett Johansson joining uh, as Black Widow. Um, I thought, but all of their scenes, anything with Cheadle and ScarJo worked really, really well in the movie, and that was probably the, the scenes that I actually liked the most, um, outside of the, uh, the uh, race car uh, battle. I thought that was a really good scene. Um, but the, the CGI battle at the end just did not work. Um, it was just, it was just you know, mindful robots just exploding and stuff like that. And even the final battle with Whiplash against uh, War Machine and Iron Man was relatively quick and wasn't well put together. Uh, so that's why Iron Man 2 falls on the list at number 19. And we go to number 18 and we are sticking with the Iron Man franchise, as it is Iron Man 3. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going, Sean, Iron Man 3 was worse than Iron Man 2 or Thor The Dark World. I know why you're saying that. It's because of the one lingering huge problem that happens with Iron Man 3, and that's, of course, the Mandarin twist. No, I am not okay with it. That pissed me off. Um, that's the equivalent of Batman's Joker not being the Joker and being a rent-a-clown. To look like the Joker. Uh, I get it. It's still... The, uh, even watching it back uh, again, it does not work. Uh, it kills the character. I mean, you could have still had the Mandarin be the Mandarin. Um, and then... And, and, and still have... Um, uh, um, Aldrich Killian still be... Uh, this... You know, Aldrich Killian. You could have had him you know, still be that, but, th but him working for the Mandarin... And then try to throw a, a curveball. Whereas, like, when Tony finds the Mandarin, he plays it off like he's an actor. But then at the end of the movie, you show that the Mandarin was still the Mandarin, but he was just clever enough to trick Tony into thinking he wasn't. Now, I know that they made a one-shot to kind of give this, but it was a little too little too late. Um, because that was just more of a backlash fan um, service thing. Like, look, we realize you guys are all upset. Here's a little video to kind of show you maybe he is the Mandarin, but no, we don't. We're not buying it, especially since the one shots proved to not have really any conclusion or any uh, connections to any of the stories outside of just doing little things here or there. Um, also, uh, I wasn't a fan of Rebecca Hall's character. Uh, completely wasted in the film. She's not needed at all. Um, literally, you could have taken her out of the film. And the film would have been the same exact movie. You could have just had uh, um, Aldrich take uh, Pepper. You know, you didn't have to have Rebecca Hall do it. Like, her character is completely irrelevant in the entire film. And her performance is just kind of meh. And then they dispatch her so melodramatically that it was just like, what was the point of this character? Um, so yeah, Rebecca Hall, easily probably one of the worst characters in the MCU, at least in terms of the films, of being useful. And having too much of a screen time focus on her to have been such a wasted character. Uh, to, I, also, I also wasn't a fan of all the Iron Mans. Um, and that Tony barely spends any time in the actual suit. Um, because uh, 
because of the PTSD from the Avengers film? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't like... Like, while it's a, it's a cool visual in the final battle where you have all these Iron Man um, things fighting, it also makes the suits feel relatively cheap because they were all breaking super, super easily. And it makes the suits look weaker in opinion. Why is when Tony... I mean, obviously because there's a human body in it. But, you know, what what makes the Tony suit or Tony's Iron Man suit better than the others? Um, and it can't just be because Tony's in it. If anything... That would mean Tony is more at risk of getting injured because if these suits are that breakable so fast, how is Tony not constantly injured every time he fights? So the logic doesn't really match there. Plus him blowing up all the Iron Man suits at the end. Uh, once again, cool visual, but just utterly stupid, especially since he returns as Iron Man in, in the next film of Age of Ultron. So what was the whole point of blowing up billions of dollars of Iron Man suits for no reason at all? So that that didn't work either. The one thing I actually did like, um, but then they kind of abandoned it halfway through the film, was I actually really liked the PTSD of Tony from the events of the Avengers. I liked because it gave a, a kind of a, a weakness to Tony and something that they could have delved into deeper of his character. And um, you know maybe that's why he didn't want to be in the Iron Man suit, but that's never ever explained. Uh, but yeah, I, I I liked that, but they didn't like they they gave up halfway through the film on it because obviously Pepper was captured at that point. And he had to focus on other things. But it was one of those things where it was a very good um, potential storyline that was working, and then they gave up on it. Uh, so yeah, so that's why Iron Man three. I mean, the reason why I like Iron Man three over Iron Man two is I like Shane's Black's, Shane Black's dialogue. Robert Downey Jr. knows all about Shane Black's dialogue. He was in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was a fantastic film if you guys have not seen it. So Robert Downey knows how to work around Shane Black's script. Um, once again, Don Cheadle is great in his roles. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is great as Pepper Potts. Aldridge Killian. I actually like Guy Pierce's performance. Um, it's just, you know, once you found out he was a Mandarin, you were just pissed off at the end. But his performance was actually solid throughout the entire film. I also like the um, the stationary bad guys that they use. Uh, what's what's his name? Um, uh, James James Bridge D or Badge Dale. He plays uh, Savin. I liked his like kind of secondary villain character who who's just a thorn in Tony's side that Tony to th thorny that Tony could not kill. Um, I liked all of it. It was just literally the twist ruins the film, and I actually liked Ben Kingsley when he was the Mandarin. Uh, I thought his Mandarin character, when he was doing the, the um, vignettes, uh, were, were great. Um, it was just, you had a movie that was working in, in, in most levels, and then he threw a, a, a twist in there. I mean, good job on trying to be unique, but bad execution on it overall. And that's why Iron Man 3 is better than Iron Man 2, but is still in the bottom three. Going to the number 17 film is the original Thor. Um, I like Thor as a character. Uh, he's grown on me, but I didn't like him based off of this film. The problem with this film is that you have half a good film. I love everything that was on Asgard. Asgard was awesome, and it was an amazing visual, and everything about that worked for me, and I just wanted to stay in Asgard throughout the entire film. But for some reason, they had to have stuff happen on Earth, and I hated most of everything on Earth. It became a comedy. It became a rom-com. Um, and I was... This is us just getting introduced to the Thor character. And I felt like we had a better understanding or better um, uh, linking to his character when he was in Asgard. I get that he, you had to humble him and, and you know make him become the true Thor that he is today. But it's just... The stuff on Earth does not work for me. I'm not a fan. I mean, yes, she has some good lines, but Kat Dennings takes way too much screen time as, as Darcy. And, uh, I mean, I love Natalie Portman. She's one of my favorite actresses uh, out there. But, I mean, she's a character who's so in her beliefs of her science, but then as soon as Thor basically kind of bats his eyes at her, she just becomes your regular rom-com kind of girl. Uh, the, um, I mean, it was just... The film overall, like I said, it's decent. I mean, it's just not great. Like, it's just kind of, alright, it was fine, um, but I didn't love it kind of thing. 
uh, Hemsworth, Hiddleston as Loki, and of course Natalie Portman. They all do a great job. It's just the writing of the film overall, which is 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 incredibly shocking because Kenneth Bron uh, Bron or Bron. Fuck, I'm I'm so bad with names. Kenneth, um, uh, Bronan, Brana. I can't say his fucking. Can't say his name. Sorry for the f bomb. Um, I mean, you thought with him as director that this movie was going to be awesome, and it's just kind of, eh, kind of a thing. Um, but and the other thing too is it's like the whole sword in the stone storyline. I mean, it was just like, God, once again, I'm. So sick and tired, even though, I mean, this is an older film. So sick and tired of people trying to force the King Arthur storyline and anything that's not King Arthur. Uh, leave that to King Arthur. I mean, we don't, uh, he, you know, it's stuck in the ground and he's not worthy. And then he sacrifices himself over his friends and therefore he's worthy. It's just one of those things where it's like, you know, come on. Like, we, like I get that you have to humble Thor and make him more uh, human in a sense in terms of his attitude. I feel like there could have been a particular better way to do it than the sword in the stone storyline. Um, but yeah, I mean, say it's not a bad movie. There's 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 less problems with it than the previous three films. It just wasn't a favorite of mine, and that's why it is number seventeen on the list. Going to number sixteen is the most recent Captain Marvel. Now, for anyone who has watched my reviews on the channel, you guys can see my review for Captain Marvel. And you guys can definitely see what my problems were with the film overall. And yes, I have seen Captain Marvel more than once. So uh, I did go in with lower expectations the second time around to see if it maybe swayed me a different way. And I felt the exact same way with Captain Marvel at, as I did the first time I watched it. Uh, great chemistry bet between the cast. Um, funny moments and, great, uh, and good 90s callbacks that I thought were quite funny. Um, but... It's not a good origin story. Um, with with Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man, by the end of their initial films, I know who Thor is. I know who Tony Stark is, and I know who Steve Rogers is as a character. I still have no idea who Carol Danvers is as a character. Um, she's a witty... She's basically a female Tony without money, uh, and she's OP. But that doesn't tell me about Carol. And that's where the first part of the film fails for me. The, for me, the movie doesn't get, you know, start being good until they get to Rambo's farm or Rambo's house because he doesn't really have a farm. Uh, actually, she does have a farm. Um, but anyway, I I feel like the movie is just kind of scatterbrained and all over the place until they get to her farm and we start to kind of learn who Carol is. Um, so the first half of the film is just all over the place overall, and it doesn't really work for me. And then, of course, you waste certain characters. Um, Coulson is completely wasted in the movie. You just wanted Coulson in there just to have Coulson in there, and he brings nothing to the film overall. Same thing with Ronan. Now, I feel like Ronan is someone who will eventually get used in any Captain America sequels if they're still doing the past tense storyline instead of current day. Um, so if that's the case, then, you know, they were just planting the seed for Ronan, and then I will be okay with his, his, uh, appearance in the film. But if they don't do that, then what was the point of putting Ronan in the movie in the first place? Um, but yeah, it's just, like, it's, it's, like I said, it's fine, but it was not a good origin story. Now, if it was a Phase 1 movie, which it is placed in the Phase 1 verse of the MCU, then I probably would have liked it better. Uh, but with all the movies that we have had, and this being the number 21 overall if you count the Hulk, it's a rather weak film overall. Uh, and that's nothing against Brie Larson or anyone in the film. It is literally a writing and directing problem, not necessarily a cast. I like Ben Mendelsohn as, um, as, uh, trying to not, Talos, Telios, or however you want to say his dang name. Um, I liked... Uh, Lashana Lynch as, as Maria Rambo. Samuel Jackson was great. Um, even though I totally understand and get why people are upset about his eye. Because, yeah, that was incredibly lame. Um, Jude Law I thought was good as Jan Rod, But they don't use him enough in the movie for him to be an effective villain. Uh, also, the final battle on the ship. It is way too dark and you cannot see who she's fighting at all in the movie. And that's the other big problem too. Is once she figures out she can go full strength or powers. 
the movie's basically over. There's not a single moment after that where she's ever in peril or in trouble. So <clears throat> it's it's very hard to get behind a, a movie when the movie's basically over as soon as she realizes that she's wearing a chip. Because everything that happens after that is just her going incredibly OP, which I get, but you gotta have at least some element of danger for the character, and there's no element of danger after that point. Um, but yeah, so that's why Captain Marvel is number 16 on the list. Could it have been a hell of a lot better? Absolutely. Um, th will I s obviously see a Captain Marvel sequel? Of course I will. I'll, I'll watch any MCU movie. But it was definitely not a good first attempt. Um, and I think they could have done better. And that's why it is at number 16 on the list. Going to number 15 is the second installment of Ant-Man with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Once again, it's fine. Uh, I don't hate Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, it's just, there are certain, th it was just one of those movies where you just kind of sat there, you watched, you laughed. Um, but you didn't really care about it. Uh, it was one of those movies where it kind of just, you watched it and you didn't really retain anything except for the post credit scene because that's, was the most important part of the film. And for this being the first movie out after Infinity War, I mean, yeah, the stakes were lowered, which is nice, but I would have preferred it to be just a little bit higher than what we actually got. I mean, there's no real villain in the movie. Ghost is not a villain. And once you figure out her character, you realize, oh, she's not a villain after all. So there goes the main villain of the movie. And I'm sorry, Walton Goggins' Sonny is not a villain. He is, he's a, um, uh, what's the word? Um, I'm blanking on the word. Uh, but I mean, he's, 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 he's a goon. He's, he's basically a bad guy goon. He keeps talking about his boss. We never see his boss. We never we know who his boss is. So who the hell is his boss? Is it a Hydra guy? We don't know. But you just keep keep leaving all these shows like, well, I gotta get this for my boss. I gotta get this for my boss. But then we never find out who the boss is. So it's like, unless that's gonna happen in Iron Man, or Iron Man, in Ant-Man 3, if they even make an Ant-Man 3, um, then it's it, it's kind of, there's no real villain in the film. I also was not a fan of... Of the stupid keep away in the third act, where literally it's, you know, I've got the, I've got the building, come and get me. Now I've got the building, come and chase me. It's like, it's like because there's no villain, there's no fight in the end. So it's just a stupid game of keep away with the building while everyone inside's trying to get into the quantum realm, and it just kind of just felt silly and not in a good way, kind of silly. And overall, it just didn't work over, you know, for me as as a strong um, sequel. The Wasp, uh, obviously played by Ev Evangeline, Evangeline or Evangeline Lilly, um, I loved her. She was great. Every scene that she was in was fantastic. Ghost was really cool in her fight scenes with Wasp. And of course, Paul Rudd's great as Ant Man. He brings the comedy. And of course, um, uh, Michael like Michael Pena as Louise is is funny as well. Um, so, I mean, they bring a lot of the laughs, and it's enjoyable in that respect. Uh, but the film as a whole doesn't really work for me. The Quantum Realm stuff looked cool. I wish it would have kind of stayed in there more, and maybe that had been the third act, and not the whole keep-away thing going on outside of it. Because uh, I feel like there could have been more story and more things to develop in the Quantum Realm, since it looks like we're going to be going to that, at least what looks like it, going into Endgame. So I wish we would have kept more time in there, as I felt like that was some very important storytelling that really got shortchanged. And that's why Ant-Man and the Wasp is at the number uh, 15 spot. Or, 15 or 16? I lost count. No, 15. Captain Marvel was 16. Um, going to number 14 on the list is the original Ant-Man. Kind of the same stuff as the first one. I love the, the heist-type story. Almost like an Oceans kind of film where the whole plot is revolving around them having to break into this into this building to um, get a particular item. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoy the heist part of the film. Once again, Paul Rudd's great. Michael Douglas is a good Hank Pym. Eva Jean Lilly is, is great. Um, I'm not going to call her Wasp because she wasn't Wasp in that movie. Uh, but, you know, and, and of course, Michael Peña is Louise. It's fun. It's funny. Uh, once again, another low-stakes movie um, that, you know, 
like I said, it's cool in, in a small piece, but it doesn't really do a whole lot in the whole hindsight of the whole MCU. So, uh, I also didn't mind Corey Stoll as, um, uh, was it Black Jacket? Black, Black Jacket? I think that's what it was, Black Jacket. Uh, I didn't mind him, it's just his character, I, I, enjoy, I actually quite enjoyed the final battle with them, with, you know, fighting in, in his, in, uh, Ant-Man's daughter's room, and, you know, you have Thomas the Engine and stuff like I enjoyed it, I thought that was actually quite enjoyable. Um, so they just didn't build up Corey Stahl's villain character enough for him to be a strong villain, he was just basically anti-Ant-Man, um, and that's where that character went. Uh, so yeah, Ant-Man was fine, it just didn't do enough for me to, uh, make me love it more than the films that are ahead of it. So Ant-Man 1 comes in at the number 14 spot. So coming in at number 13, um, this one was kind of the one where I just didn't really, really know quite where to place it, because like, I like it, but I didn't love it. Um, and that is Doctor Strange. Uh, look, I love Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I think he's a great Stephen Strange. Um, I love, uh, Chiwetel Ojafor. I hope to God I said that right, because I, that poor guy, I butcher his name so damn bad. I think that's probably the closest I've ever gotten to saying his name correctly, so high marks for me on that. I'm gonna go ahead and pat myself on the back. I loved him as Mordo. Um, Rachel McAdams was solid as Christine Palmer. Uh, Benedict Wong was great as Wong. I thought he was funny. Uh, I love Mads Mikkelsen, and I think he was a great, um, uh, K K Kelsius, Kalissus. I, I, I never knew how to say his name right. Uh, Tilda Swinton was a good as the Ancient One. I thought she was fine. Um, the cast is, is great. It's just, uh, the final battle fell flat. While it was a very cool visual watching everyone kind of work backwards, um, the Dormammu thing, once again, funny, uh, but it was just kind of like, well, that's, that's kind of it for the final battle. It just kind of felt kind of meh, uh, with the final battle. Um, I love the Inception, like, battles. I thought those were really cool. Brought a lot of imagination, um, to the film and a lot of, uh, brought a lot of unique ways, um, uh, to, to bring some fighting styles to the film that I thought was really cool. Um, but I, I, I felt like it took too long to get Doctor Strange to being Doctor Strange. Uh, I mean, you have him, you know, being a doctor, which I thought was great. Then you have him go through the injury. You have him go a little bit too far into the injury. Um, and then you have, you know, have to have him wait and find, uh, Benjamin Bratt's, um, Jonathan, uh, Padborn character, uh, to find out that he has to go to, um... I'm I'm uh, yeah, I'm blanking on the uh, name of the place they have she, he has to go, but where the ancient one is, I'm I'm blanking on where it's at, um, Kezer Posh or something like that. I, that was totally wrong, <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and then and then we have to go through all the training and him becoming smarter and him learning how to use his uh, spells and, and stuff like that. It's just like it's a very 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 long long time. And yes, I know that people are going to use this argument against me with a film that's rated a lot higher on the list. And I'll get to that when we get to that movie. Um, but yeah, it's just, it took too long for the movie to get going. It just felt like a, um, a long introduction to the character, which I know I said was not, was, which was problems with certain films. But that's the thing, is there are certain films where it works being slow to, to develop a character because of building blocks for the character. And then there are times where it just feels stagnant. And this is one of those where it just felt stagnant. Um, like I said, love all the actors in the movie. I thought they all did a great job. The battle scenes looked cool, um, but the final battle fell flat, and it took too long to get to the actual meat of the story, a.k.a. Um, Mads Nicholson's villain character and Doctor Strange from meeting. And it just kind of, you know, once it, it got there, it was fine. It just it took too long to get there for me. And that's why Doctor Strange falls at the number 13 spot. Now, number 12 is going to piss off a lot. No, with a scratch it. Number 11 and number 12 are going to piss off a lot of you. I get it. Once again, like I said in the beginning, these are all really good to great movies, not counting the bottom three. Um, but they got to be placed somewhere. And these are the reasons why these ones are 11 and 12 and not ranked higher. They are probably ranked... Like, 11 and 12 could be ranked in some people's top 5. It could be definitely ranked in the top 10, but for me, they are 11 and 12. 
So we're going to go ahead and start with number 12, and that is the original Iron Man. I get it. I get it. Iron Man started it all. It's, it's a fantastic film. Blah, 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 blah. Robert Downey Jr. is amazing. Yes, he is. Yes, it is the movie that started it all. Um, yes, Robert Downey Jr. is a fantastic Tony Stark. I love this movie. I do. But it's not a perfect movie. One of the things when talking about Iron Man to a lot of people, what do you like? And they all say the same two things for the most part. They love the cave scene where he's building Iron, Iron Man for the first time. And then they love the training montage where he's learning how to put them together. And he's got dumb and dummy, um, you know, going through that stuff. You know what? That's the middle of the movie. No one talks about the beginning. No one talks about the end. It is a great middle film, <laughs> but the beginning and the end fall short. Ebediah Stain is a potential good villain. I liked his villain. I thought um, Jeff Bridges does a great job as Ob Obadiah, not Ebediah, Obadiah Stain. Um, but the final battle falls flat. It's not good. You know, basically Jeff Bridges is a, is a talking head at that point, and I felt like they could have done that one better. Um, in the beginning, it was just, you know, it was setting up so we could get back to the cave, because, you know, that's kind of how the movie starts. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just, everyone talks about the cave scene with him and, um, and, uh, Yinsen, uh, building, building the Iron Man, and then him breaking out of that, which, that part's great. Uh, and then you have him working in the lab by himself, um, with Dumb and Dummy learning the suit for the first time. That's great. Everything in the middle, or everything around that, is okay. Like, it's good, it's not great. And I think a lot of people just get that, um, not muddled, but I think everyone just kind of compiles it all into one big thing and thinks Iron Man's one of the best uh, superhero movies of all time, it's one of the best MCU movies of all time, and it's not. And it's, it's a good starting point, because it's the first movie. They had no idea that it was gonna it was gonna do as well as it did. I mean, they left the bookend at the end of the credits with Nick Fury to start it, but there was no guarantee that that movie was ever going to go past Iron Man. Um, so, could they if they knew they were gonna continue with it and they knew it was gonna make a lot of money, so they probably would have done some things differently to have made it stronger and better, aka Terrence Howard um, as Rhodey. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's just not the best. Um, I enjoy it. I'll, I'll go back and watch Iron Man all day long. Um, but the movie itself is not all, all around that great. It's a very, very great middle and a mediocre end and an all right beginning. And that's why Iron Man goes to the 12th spot. Now going to number 11. And this one, like I said, is going to piss off you pe most people more than Iron Man. Number 11 is Thor Ragnarok. I have huge, huge problems with Thor Ragnarok. And uh, once again, I know it's going to piss you people off. But once again, this is my rankings. You guys can do a video and make your own. Um, first things first. The first 30 minutes is way too fast-paced. Um, I feel like Taika Waititi does the same thing that Zack Snyder did with... Uh, BVS, or Batman vs. Superman, is Taika wanted to make a Planet Hulk movie. He did not want to make a Thor movie. Therefore, he fast-forwards through everything Thor until they get to Planet Sakaar, where they can actually do a Planet Hulk movie with Thor there. Um, just like with BVS. Zack Snyder wanted to make a Batman movie. He did not want to make a Super Superman movie. So anything Superman, he blitzes through so he can just focus on Batman. And I feel like that's what Thor Ragnarok is, is a sped through Thor story to get to Planet Hulk. Now, once they get to Planet Sakaar, it is in def it's definitely a better film. So the Planet Hulk movie is great. I love the Planet Hulk film that he made. Um, but I hated everything he did with Thor. Like I said, the first 30 minutes, it's just boom, 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 boom. No breath. Just go, go, go. I mean... He, he takes out the, the lava monster in the beginning. He goes to Asgard. He realizes it's Loki and not Odin. He takes him to Earth. Boom, there's Doctor Strange. Boom, they find out that his dad's in a, in a home. They go to the home. The home's just destroyed. You find out somehow that him and, him and uh, um, 
Him and Natalie Portman aren't together anymore. Then boom, they go on the cliff. Odin's there. He dies. And then Hela shows up immediately and there's no weight to, to Odin's death. And then they beat, and then they beat, uh, uh, she, she destroys, uh, Mir Mir. And I know I said that wrong. And then all of a sudden, boom, he gets, he gets thrown away and he gets, he lands in Sakaar. And then she goes to Asgard and she kills all the warriors three in a blink of an eye. Do they care about that? No, they make a joke. And then all of a sudden they're on planet Sakaar and it slows down. Yeah, that's, I know I talked really, really fast. But that's about the speed that they were going with that movie. It's boom, 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 boom. And then once they got to the Hulk part, slowed down. And that's the problem with the film in the most part. The other big problem too, and this is the thing that I will die on this hill, is that Taika Waititi ruins this movie by not letting any of the emotional weight that happens in this film sink in and immediately follows it with a joke. Odin dying, that's a huge moment. Now, yes, it didn't follow with a joke. Hela showed up right away. I get why that happens because he said, as soon as I die, she will come. But damn, at least give us like 30 seconds to a minute of Thor and Loki mourning over uh, over Odin's death before Hela shows up. I mean, she literally, he literally like disintegrates into dust and she's just bam, there. You know, killing the Warriors 3. Am I the only person that has any respect for the Warriors 3 in the Thor franchise? Because it freaking feels like it. She dispatches them quickly. Not my problem. That that was like a huge deal. But instead of that being a gut punch and like a... <gasps> it is immediately followed with a janitor joke by Carl Urban's character. And it just... It, it doesn't take it seriously. At the end, they literally destroy Asgard. His home world. His only world he's ever known outside of Earth. They destroy it. And instead of letting that linger as an emotional weight... That to all of these people who are watching their homes and their livelihoods be destroyed by Hela and, um, uh, Surther, uh, it's followed by a joke by Korg. And it's just like, god damn it, man, let the emotional weight of this film resonate with us instead of trying to make everything a joke. And don't even get me started on Korg. Is he funny? Yes, he is. But damn it, Taika Waititi voices Korg, and he gives him way too many lines. He gives him all the funny jokes. And it's just like, dude, you're coming off egotistical like I have to have all the best lines. Korg's got to be the funny one. And blah, blah, blah. It just kind of comes off like, no, you just wanted to give yourself all the best lines. Not that he even has the best line. The best line in the movie, to me, is the story of Thor as a kid and Loki turning into a snake. And then as soon as Thor picks up the snake, Loki goes, gotcha. Instead, that's the best part of the whole movie for me. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it, it tries too much to be like Guardians of the Galaxy, because Guardians of the Galaxy works, and Thor wasn't working in two films, so they go, let's take Thor, let's throw in Guardians of the Galaxy comedy, but let's make an actual Planet Hulk movie, because no one wants to make an actual Hulk film, um, we'll just put him with buddy people, and that's Thor Ragnarok. And yeah, it's still a lot of fun, which is why it's so high on my list. Because actually, the other movies behind it, I have more problems with Thor Ragnarok than I do those. But, once again, Taika still makes it an incredibly fun movie. And once they hit Sakaar, it is still, it is a ton of fun. And it slows down. And I enjoy Thor Ragnarok quite a bit, but it still pisses me off, that movie overall. And that that's why it is not in my top ten. That's why it will never be in my top ten. And that is why um, I will always die on this hill that Thor Ragnarok is incredibly overrated uh, by people. And I get this isn't a lot of people's top five, some people's favorite uh, MCU movie overall. But you guys cannot deny my bullet points that I just brought up about this movie that's wrong with it. Um, I will admit it is a funny film. It is enjoyable. I laughed quite a bit while watching it. But the problems with it going way too fast to start the film because they just wanted to get the planet Sakaar and the emotional beats ruined with jokes at every moment literally hurts this film and does not make it a, a, a top 10 film in the MCU overall. Now, that is the 11 through 20 ranking of the MCU. I realize that there's probably a lot of films in this people that people thought would be in their top 5, top 10. And I know there's some movies that are going, how is this movie not in 11 through 20? and it is in his top 10, well, you know what, I've got my explanations, and I'll go over that in the next video, because there will be a part two to this, 
where I will go over the top 10 rated MCU movies. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like this, this video is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button onto the channel so that way you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on the video or up on YouTube, especially part one, which is the top 10 MCU ranking videos. Uh, and uh, yeah, don't forget to leave your comments on the videos. If you guys like this, this list, if you guys didn't like it, like I said, no hate for it. Just tell me what your ranking is. I would love to see what your guys' rankings are for the MCU. Yours don't have to equal mine. You guys could have Thor The Dark World number one. Who am I kidding? You guys won't. But I was <laughs> just saying, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. 90% of you people probably will have Thor Ragnarok in your top five. Not me. Um, but yeah, so like I said, don't forget to leave your comments. Uh, and then if you guys want to go ahead back over to the YouTube page, go ahead and click on part two to see top the top 10 starting at number 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders.